Okay, so at this point in time, we have covered ionic bonding. Ionic bonding, at this point, you should understand, we're talking about the metals who are big, who hold on to electrons loosely. And when they interact with elements who are smaller, who are good at attracting electrons, there's going to be a transfer. We write lithium with one valence electron, it's 2-1. We write fluorine, our nonmetal, Okay, 2-7, seven, so seven dots. What's gonna happen, and we've done this, fluorine's gonna take that electron, and when it does, it becomes negatively charged. And we write the brackets and the charges. Its configuration goes from 2-7 to 2-8. So fluorine gains an electron, and it feels like it's as stable as neon. And it achieves stability, and energy is released. Lithium is 2-1 by losing one, it becomes two, which is the same configuration as helium. So the driving force here is they're using each other to get stable. That's what covalent bonding does, but they, they achieve it a little differently. When it was a metal and a non-metal, there was a great difference in strength. If I can ask Kara to come back up here. Kara represented the metal in our tug of war. Maybe. Hello. So, Kara's going to be the metal. So she's going to lose again. It doesn't make her a loser. Okay. You can be a non-metal after this. Okay. So here's your end of the rope. But those that didn't watch last time, we had a tug of war. I was the non-metal. I had a higher electronegativity. In fact, fluorine has the highest. We give it a rating of four. Lithium is a 0.9 or 0.8 or probably 0.1 or 1.0, I believe. But it doesn't matter. So I am so much more attracted. This represents the outermost electron, okay? We fight for each other, and it's not much of a battle. I win. Yeah, interpretive dance, you know what I'm saying? I win. I love my electron. I gain the electron, okay? I get nice and stable. We both get stable. I become negative and stable. She loses by becoming stable, and we bond. Positives and the negative attracts the positive, and it's an ionic bond. Thank you. But now, stay right there. You can stay, stay, stay back for a second. Now we're dealing with covalent bonding. Because we have to bond between metals and nonmetals. But what about nonmetals and nonmetals? Could they, in a way, affect each other? Well, let's take a, 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 a shot at this. Let's take hydrogen. Okay? Good old hydrogen. Let's make it red. Hydrogen is here. I think I want to go a little thicker though. How many valence electron does our hydrogen have? It has one. So I write one dot. Okay. Now, hydrogen is written over here, but we know better. It's the Waldo. It doesn't really belong here. It has one valence, but it's a non-metal. It's small. Let's have it hook up with, let's say, fluorine in this case. Same element before. Two non-metals. So yes, Kara is going to be a non-metal. Now. Fluorine has seven. I'll just draw a different color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here we go with hydrogen. You can be a nonmetal now. Let's see. I'm going to be fluorine. We both are small atoms. We both attract electrons. But the difference between H and F, who are two nonmetals, and a metal and nonmetal, is the difference in the strength isn't as great. Before, we're just going to reverse, I was able to pull the rope away from you when, I, when there's a great difference, metal, nonmetal. But two nonmetals, as we learned, both have high electronegativity. They're both strong. Okay? I believe hydrogen is about 2.2, fluorine's a 4. Both are extremely highly attracted. So when we fight for the electrons, I'm a little bit stronger, so I win a little bit, but I'm not. the difference in the strength isn't as great enough or great enough for me to pull the rope away. My friends, we, there's a stalemate here. We're both strong. Nobody can pull the rope from each other, so there's no transfer. So we're forced, as Sam said, to share. 
If you look at this combination, so nobody wins. In truth, I'm a little stronger, so I pull the rope closer to me, and we'll talk about what that means, it's called a polar bond, but we're forced to shear because the difference in electronegativity is both very similar, both high. Here the difference is, was, was tremendous, one to four, and there was a transfer. Here it's 2.2 to four, similar. I'm a little stronger, okay, so we're forced to shear. Does that make a difference? Does that make some sense? Okay, thanks, Kara. Now, wait a minute. Is this a nice combination? So when hydrogen hits fluorine, by sharing, can you see that fluorine feels like it has eight by sharing? Look, it got eight in an ionic transfer by transferring. It got stable by transferring. Here, it got stable by sharing. Same difference. Fluorine now feels like it's 2-8 by sharing. Hydrogen, just one, wants to gain one more electron and become like helium. By sharing, it feels like it has the two. So in this case, two nonmetals react covalently by sharing, not transferring. Why? Because the difference in electronegativity is similar. Me and Kara are forced to share. So when you write covalent compounds, nonmetals, nonmetals, there is no brackets and charges. There is no transfer. There is sharing. And you have to add enough of the electrons to, to show this. Let's do a couple examples. In your worksheet that I gave you, let's deal with H2, number one. Okay, so let's go to a blank. Where am I? All right, so let's go here. Yeah, the back, I'm sorry. I just make myself clear. So here's H. What would H2 look like? Each hydrogen has how many valence electrons? One. So if you put them together, you always put out the valence electrons. Each one has one. And if you check, by sharing, hydrogen feels like this hydrogen feels like it has two. By sharing, this hydrogen feels like it has two. My friends in chemistry, this is the Lewis dot diagram for hydrogen. Does it make sense that hydrogen's a Hofbrinkel is diatomic? If you have H atoms with one apiece, does it make sense they'll collide and hang out as H2? Yeah, that's reason why. I just told you a month and a half ago, right, there's a reason behind it, now I can give you the chemistry. I told you a month and a half ago that Hofbrinkel's, and those that don't have me, Hofbrinkel's are these elements that love to bond. It's a mnemonic I use, and a lot of other chemistry teachers I know use Hoff Brinkle or Brinkle Hoff, but all of these guys help you remember that they love to bond with themselves. Here's the reason why. H is a Hoff Brinkle because it's a nice pairing. H atoms will come together and achieve a stable electron configuration as helium, and that's why they do it. They use each other to become stable. Let's do fluorine. Check out why fluorine's a hot wrinkle. Now, how many valence electrons does fluorine have? Uh, uh, do I, did I get number two? So it's number two. Two is bromide, but you can make it F. Let's do it F. That's okay. So let's do F. Because it's a hot yeah, bromide, it's the same thing. How many valence electrons for fluorine? It's in group 17. It's a halogen, so you should always get seven. Yeah. And another fluorine. Which number are we doing? I'm making this one up. Number two was bromide. You can cross it out and put F2 there. And this F has seven. Does it make sense that fluorine atoms, when they hit each other, are going to prefer to become F2? Why does fluorine prefer to be F2 and not just F atoms? Because when they collide, they achieve stable, mobile gas stable configurations. It's as if I'm gaining one. I'm forced to share, but I'm, that's as if I'm gaining one. And you can check. You don't have to draw the circles, but some people like to do so to check. What does every element want to become? What's that number we call using a lot? It's called the octet rule. They want to be that eight. What was fluorine before it shared electrons? It was 2-7. Right, right off the periodic table, it's 
They both work. By sharing each other's electron, they both become 2-8, which is what? Who's 2-8? Neon. They get as stable as neon. So that's the reason why they prefer each other. So when you do a Lewis dot dye or a covalent compound, put out all the valence electrons. Then put one bond together. What do you think is a bond here? How many electrons create a bond, do you think? A covalent bond. This is new. How many electrons do you think create a covalent bond? Well, I'll help you. Look at hydrogen. I can write hydrogen this way. Another right, way to write, write it is, is H dash to H. What does this dash represent? One bond, which is a pair of electrons. I could write fluorine this way. F bonded to F. What does that dash represent? Someone said it telepathically. One bond. Now notice H doesn't have any lone pairs, so I don't write it. If you want to write your Lewis dot diagrams this way, you can. The dash represents a pair. That's important. But you have to write the lone pairs. Okay? So bromide's done the same way. Let's look at number 302. Another hop wrinkle, or wrinkle hop. Let's look at O2. Uh, that's a new one. Okay, oxygen. I'm going to write one. How many valence electrons for oxygen? Six. So the first step is to put out all the valence electrons. Put six out there. It doesn't matter where you put them. You're going to have to erase and remove them anyway. And then another oxygen has six as well. So I just put it out there. And how do I know it's six? In the periodic table, each oxygen is two dash six. Clearly, they want to become like neon, so they want to gain how many more? But they can't gain. This one has the same strength as this one. Two twins with the same strength, okay, are fighting it off genetically, and no one's going to win. This is going to be shared right down the middle. We call this a non polar bond. No one's really winning. So they force the share here. They can't pull electrons away, so they have to share. So here's what you do. Watch. When you put two atoms together, always try to make one bond first and see if it works. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, um, take this dot. Maybe. See if I can actually take it. And I'm going to put it here. I know you guys you can't do that. I feel bad, but now I'm over. And I'm going to take this dot and move it here. I made one bond. One bond is one pair. That's the first thing you do. Oh, I'm sorry, the second thing. The first thing you do is put out all the valence electrons of all the atoms involved. Then pair them up to make one bond, which is a pair. Is this correct? Lewis dot diagram structure for O2. Now, in the... The Lewis dot diagram structure of ionic compounds, I said you had to have zero electrons for the metal, and the nonmetal has to have that eight, and the charges have to balance. That's kind of gone by the wayside. Now you know you're done when all the elements involved either have that eight octet or two if you're dealing with hydrogen. So you're looking for eight for all the nonmetals. Right now, if I share, look, circle around the oxygen's lone pairs here. I've got two, four, six, seven, and I'll draw that. I'll draw that so you can see it. You don't have to draw circles, party people, but it may help you see it. This oxygen feels like it is now seven electrons. So now it feels like it's two dash seven. Ah, I'm getting close, but I'm not at neon. This one feels like it's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One bond isn't going to cut it. So the only thing you can do is add another bond here. Right now it's not working because all of these are not A to piece. You have to have that stable octet, which means you're as stable as a noble gas. That's why they bond. They use each other to get stable. So I have to make another bond. That's right. All right, so I take another bond. That used to be funny when kids knew what James Bond was. But in any case, take this, put that here. Take another one, and now does it work? 
by making a second bond, does it work? All right. He wishes she could bond anyway. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This guy, by sharing two pairs, feels like it's eight. Now it feels like it's two dash eight. This one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It works. If you want to throw the circles in, include the lone pairs, you'll see that. This feels like it's eight. And I can draw this another way. Here's an O, double bonded. So how many dashes do I put? Two. I can write it this way, but make sure you put the lone pairs. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Each dash is a pair. So I can do this instead of that, but it really is good to start here. Again, we're sharing to become stable, and everyone has its eight. And now this feels like it's 2 8, this one feels like it's 2 8. I want you to try N2 right now on your own. start with one bond. Obviously one bond's not going to cut it because when I look at this, this starts out with five valence electrons, group 15. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six. All I can do is now add another bond. So when I do so, let's see what happens. I add another bond. And now I evaluate. This has, by sharing, two, four, Six, seven, is that good? Does this one just have seven? Where is nitrogen? How many more electrons does it like to have? Three, right now it only has seven. So what am I forced to do? Right now it's only sharing seven. What can I, what, what can I do here to fix that? Add another bond and, and see if it works. It's trial and error, guys. It's all it is. You put out the valence electrons and you keep pairing them up till you get the result that we're looking for. And what we're looking for is a stable electron configuration which occurs when you have the octet for all elements oops, outside of the um, row one. So this has what? That's not what I wanted. So if you count this has eight electrons. What does the nitrogen have, other nitrogen have, by sharing? Also has eight. My friends in chemistry, nitrogen has a triple bond. Can't forget the lone pairs at the end. So you needed three bonds. Now, make some sense, let's make some sense of all of this. Oops, let's make some sense of all this. Where's my periodic table? Oh, was it here, here, here? Look, fluorine was one away from neon. How many bonds did it need when it bonded to itself? One. Oxygen was two away, right? So it needed two bonds. Where's nitrogen? Three away, okay? All right, so I'm gonna stop there, okay? And I'm gonna ask you to do five, six, seven, and eight. I will help you, now I'll leave it at that, and we'll see if I, I may post a lecture. Now I'm going to ask you to do five, I'm going to actually finish this actually, okay, and I will post the key. The one thing that I will say is like number five, you have a C and H4, the carbon who has multiple bonds will be in the middle, okay. Some are going to require double bonds, single bonds, and you'll figure that out, okay. So I'm going to ask you to finish the worksheet, okay, and 
want to go back to this lecture to see how I'm doing that, I'll post the key. All right?